So this is the part of the show where I talk about what I believe is important for individual investors to think about when you make your investment decisions over the next few weeks. Topics I've chosen for this part of the show, as many of you that watch the show know, I like to choose three ideas. And for the most part, unfortunately, uh, the ideas have been quite similar from show to show, but they're still very important today. And I try to talk about them slightly different each time. So the first point is economic data and central bank meetings. I touched on that already uh, in this past segment. So we're gonna be looking for what central banks have to say going forward. Bank of Canada today has said a lot already. Central Bank in the US, the Federal Reserve will speak next week and they'll set their economic policy. We want to continue to look at economic data, inflation data, retail sales data, jobs data. This is very important for central banks to set their policies. Individual investors also want to look at corporate earnings. How are corporations doing right now? We know they're all slowing down, but by how much? Are they still showing some growth? What are they saying for the future, the upcoming quarters? What do they see things? And lastly, evaluating an investment. I think you always need to evaluate an investment, but what do I mean with evaluating investments at this time? So we'll we'll talk a bit about that as well. So our first topic, economic data and central bank meetings. As I said, Bank of Canada has met this morning. They've announced a 25 basis point increase, and that is going to be crucial, right? Crucial for our Canadian dollar, crucial for our housing market. Uh, so I think individual investors need to take note of that. Economic data is extremely important. What are the numbers looking like? What are the inflation numbers looking like? What are, as I mentioned in the previous segment, the jobs numbers looking like? I think we have a, a few charts here, Bank of Canada rate hike chart, showing how much the Bank of Canada has raised rates today, their eighth increase since March of last year. One of the fastest pace, if not the fastest pace of increase of, of interest rates we have seen definitely uh, the fastest pace in the last 40 years. We also have a chart here showing uh, the U.S. and the, the Fed funds rate showing how steep uh, the, the target rate has gone up. Look at that. Pretty much a straight line all the way up in 2022. Once again, these are things we have not seen since the 80s, early 80s. Uh, interest rates rising that quickly. Obviously, at that time, we saw double-digit interest rates at that point during the, the, the 80s. Obviously, today, we're not anywhere near that high, but the pace of increase has been just as high. So regarding economic data, what central banks are saying, we want to look and consider what, what they're going to uh, say going forward. Are they going to give us any, any indication of a pause? Bank of Canada has already said they will pause which I think is good for, for equity investments, for investing in the stock market. But more importantly, what is the Federal Reserve going to say? As I say all the time on this show, the Fed tends to have a much bigger effect on the stock market than the Bank of Canada. So we'll be looking very closely, listening very closely at what the Fed has to say at their next meeting. Will they indicate a pause after their 25-point hike, which we all believe will happen? Don't think it's going to be anything more than that. But will they say they're going to pause or will they raise a second time at the next meeting and then pause? We definitely are closer to the end of these rate increases than we are at the beginning. But how many more do we have and what are central banks and the Fed in particular? What are they going to say going forward in the future? And that will be very important for individual investors to parse through before you make your investment decisions. Let's move on to the second topic or second point that is important. And those are corporate earnings. We're in the heart of corporate earnings season. We've heard from banks. We've heard from one major tech company, Microsoft, last night. We've heard from uh, some airlines, Netflix. What are corporations saying with regards to uh, how they're doing, what their outlook is, how are earnings looking? And it's interesting because you take a look at Netflix, for example. I think we have a chart of Netflix. They had pretty good corporate earnings. You know, their top and bottom line numbers weren't the greatest, but everybody measures Netflix on how many subscribers they can get to join or to, to, to pay, how many subscriptions they can sell. And most individuals were expecting maybe a, a few million. They ended up increasing subscriptions or, or subscriber growth by over 7 million, 7.6 million new subscribers. And Netflix just shot up when that was announced. So bottom line, top line numbers, 
didn't really look as important as subscriber growth. And certain companies, it's interesting because you would think bottom line and top line, how much they're making, how much they're making after expenses, that would be probably the most important number. But with some companies like Netflix, it's more potential. The more subscribers they have, the better their earnings hopefully will be in the future. So subscriber growth was very important. They blew out the number and the stock rose significantly. Microsoft, I believe we have a chart of Microsoft. This was an interesting one. Microsoft reported earnings last night. They actually were pretty good in my opinion. The stock initially ran up about six, 7%. Their cloud business, which is the most profitable part, profitable part of their business, their Azure as they call it, is growing at about just over 30%. Once upon a time, it was growing at 40%. The, I guess, whisper number or expectation was about 28% growth. So they beat the number. They beat on the top line growth. They beat on the bottom line growth. Everything looked great. I wake up this morning and Microsoft is down 5 6%. Stock price is down. What happened? Well, in their conference call, their CEO said that they're in tough going forward, that they don't see the growth that they used to have, which I think is obvious at this time, and that they you should expect growth to slow down going forward. And the stock just unfortunately uh, was sold off at that point. So another stock, another corporate set of corporate earnings. I like Microsoft. I think it's a fantastic company, one of the best run companies in the world today. Looked good on after they announced. And then by this morning, trading down and taking down this market today. So another example of an important uh, corporate earnings um, release that can really affect the overall stock market. And here I threw one more, Bank of America. Bank of America, like other banks in the United States, had good earnings, great earnings. And um, I look for Bank of America to continue to do well. They do well as interest rates rise. We believe interest rates are going to continue to rise, at least in the short term in the U.S. And that bodes well for a name like Bank of America. They make more money off the loans they provide, the interest they can charge is higher, and they make a lot of money, more so than most of the other banks in the US in that way. And Bank of America is a name down from about $50 a share, so down over 30% from their highs. A stock that I've said many times to many individual investors is on sale right now. So looking at corporate earnings in general is gonna be very important to what type of investment you wanna make over the next few weeks, as you add money into perhaps your RSPs, perhaps your TFSAs, as you add money overall to your uh, general portfolio. The last topic or third topic uh, that I wanted to touch on for individual investors to consider is the evaluation of investments, evaluating these investments. And what do I mean by that? Well, we have a, a couple of more charts here to show you. I always like to show some charts um, Meta, for example, Meta, formerly known as Facebook, you'll notice here their chart is showing a pretty substantial line higher, bottom left to the top right, uh, after their demise, which I guess came uh, in 2022 for the most part, they've been actually on the rise. And it's interesting because people will say, Alan, the stock has gone from about 90 at the low to almost $145 a share. Isn't this stock now too expensive to buy? And my answer is no. Keep in mind, this stock at one point was trading well over $300 a share. Their PE that many people like to look at is at the lowest it's it's been, at least that I can remember, since I can remember. And it's a name that I think has tremendous opportunity going forward. If they can get their costs under control, a name like Meta, I think has significant room to run higher. So when you evaluate a name like Meta, even though the stock has moved significantly higher, I think it can move even higher. You know, you hear often the term, this stock or this investment or the markets in general has moved too high, too fast. It's run up too much, too fast. I always make a, a fun of that because you never really hear the stock market has moved down too much, too fast. Why is that? You only hear, oh, stock has run too much, too fast. It's going to sell off. And then the stock just keeps going higher and higher if it's a good quality name. So don't necessarily buy into this theory. Oh, the stock has run up. We can't own it anymore because there are a lot of good quality names that were beaten up so much that even if they've rebounded significantly, they still have room to run. Another name is NVIDIA. 
NVIDIA is another name, well over $300 a share, got down to just over $100 a share. I think it was down to about 108, 110. And now look at it, $190 a share. Had you had the stomach to be able to go into an investment when everybody clearly was selling it, look how much profit you would have made. And I think NVIDIA can continue to move higher. I think with the reopening of China, they do a lot of business in China, that has given NVIDIA a boost and their stock price has run significantly higher. Third example I have is Goldman Sachs. Now, everybody's gonna say, Goldman Sachs, great name, and it is. A name that I own for many of my investors' portfolios, obviously for those that can handle the risks that Goldman Sachs brings. But when you look at a name like Goldman Sachs, all-time highs were just about $400 a share. 52-week high was in and around $370, $380 a share. You can see it here, about $350 a share. It's had a significant run up or higher over the past, let's call it four or five months. The PE for Goldman Sachs now sitting at around 11, 12 times. When it was, when I felt it was cheap, when it was cheap in my opinion, the PE was around eight, nine times. So you could see a name like Goldman Sachs has already run significantly higher. Would I be adding to Goldman Sachs today? Answer is no. Would I be selling Goldman Sachs? Possibly. I would have to take it on a account by account basis to see you know, how much people have made on the stock. But would I be selling Goldman? Perhaps. Would I be buying more Goldman today? Not necessarily. I don't think I would be. And that's because I think I can find investment ideas that are even cheaper now, that haven't run up yet. So this is what I mean about evaluating your investment, evaluating your stock. You need to evaluate where it's sitting today. Does it have more potential? Does it, can it go higher? Would you put more money to work today? In the case of Goldman Sachs, I'm going to say no. In the case of Meta and NVIDIA, obviously two separate names, different industries, I'm going to say yes. So you always have to evaluate the investment that you're thinking about buying before you make any investment into it for the short and for the long term.